Hi, Dr. Carniel. Hi, Lisa. Good to see you today, and you thank you for letting me join you on the news. Thank you for joining us. Have a seat, please. Okay, so Dr. Carniel, we now have two reported cases in New Jersey of measles. It's on the uptick across the country, and I have a question for you. For a disease that was almost eradicated not long ago, what's going on? Well, it relates to immunization. For some reason, and there are different reasons people have, many people have stopped having their children immunized. And because of that, when the virus gets out in the community, it then spreads and you see many cases. There's been roughly, depending on which count you read, between 147 and 162 in the United States. Mm. The, the funny thing is people think of the measles as a benign childhood disease. But in fact, there is a mortality associated with it in children five and under of one in a thousand. And there is a brain infection associated with it in one in a thousand people become infected with it. Mm. So it, it can be quite serious besides other complications. So what I'm hearing you say is, is that the reason why there's an uptick is because people, some individuals are not getting vaccinated. So even as someone that, who is vaccinated, they can actually get the measles from someone who hasn't been? Is that, is that right? Uh, no, they, they can't as long as they've developed antibodies to it. Mm. But the issue, for, which is even broader, is that we have a lot of people out there nowadays who get chemotherapy, for example, mm -hmm. for different cancers and, and such and their immune system is not working as well as it might be if they weren't on the chemotherapy, but they have to be on it to cure their cancer. Well, one of the problems you have is you have, you have people now exposed to the measles who can carry it, and for four days before they become clinically sick, they can spread the disease. Mm -hmm. And if they're near anybody who's on chemotherapy and a little bit immunosuppressed from it, some people are, some aren't, but then that person's at greater risk for catching the measles from them. So you have a whole risk of people who, for different reasons, have immune problems, besides being on chemotherapy, there's multiple reasons people can, then uh, getting sick from someone who hasn't been immunized. So it, it's actually a very big public health issue, besides a risk to the person. Yeah, it's really interesting. So I believe my children and I have both been vaccinated. Um, is it a safe vaccine? Okay, everything you do in life has some risk. Mm -hmm. Now that would include getting an immunization or vaccine, but the risk is really small. And the risk is far smaller in all the medical decision making. When you go see your doctor, your doctor weighs risk. And so what they weigh is the risk of doing something versus the risk of not doing something. And they look at the real statistics. So for example, the um, people worry about years ago, people worried about, well, if you get an immunization, can you become autistic? Well, even Autism Speaks, a big organization that you know, represents people who are unfortunate to have autism, um, and a very valuable organization, has reviewed, has gone over the data on it, as well as medical studies. And they collected 10 medical studies on over 1.2 million people. And the conclusion was, was that vaccination and immunization do not relate to developing autism. Mm. And there's just no relationship there. And so Autism Speaks has come out, and it's right on the web, you can find it, you know, just Google it out, and you'll see they say that there was no relationship, and that should not affect people getting immunized. So if that's the reason why people are not getting it, because they're concerned about that, they really shouldn't be. But some people may have other reasons, of course. Okay. And once you've been vaccinated, is there an expiration date that you have to go back and be revaccinated? It's For most people, the answer is no. But you can always check it by having a blood test at your doctor's office where your doctor can draw antibodies and find out. Okay. Well, this is a really important topic, and I'm so appreciative that you joined us here today. Um, I feel like this will really help some parents understand um, some of the precautions they can take and make some decisions for themselves. Sure. Well, thank so. you for letting me join you on the news. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that if people who are watching the news have any questions or medical issues that would like to be discussed, they can send them into Hometown TV. Mm -hmm and we can review them and try to answer them for them. Excellent, thank you. And we'll see you next month, right? Excellent, yes. All right, thank, thank you. you, Dr. Cardiel.